Hello everyone, welcome to this session on cycle counting. So let us get started with the basic question of what is cycle counting. Cycle counting is a process of counting a subset of products within specific locations in the warehouse. So through cycle counting, what we generally do is we do this counting in frequent intervals. And these intervals are generally determined by the value of the products. I'm sure you may be aware of the ABC classification that we do for the products. So to give you a quick recap, so generally based on the value of the products are the margin of the products or the revenue of the products, we classify the products in three different codes, whether they are A classification products or B classification products or C classification products. Generally what organizations will do is, their most valued or most expensive products will be counted more frequently and the less valued or less expensive products will be counted less frequently. So this way, they'll ensure that at one, one point in time, all the items across all the locations are counted. And this is less disruptive to the business compared to the annual stock take that the organizations will typically do. So you might be aware that annually the business, you know, will uh, be shut for a shut over the weekend and then they'll perform a cycle counting. Sorry, they, they'll perform a full stock take uh, within the warehouses. So instead of heavily relying on this uh, stock take, we can perform this cycle counting on a fixed periodic so that we can identify any stock discrepancies very early. So once we identify the stock discrepancies, we'll be able to do that internal audit on why the stock is getting missed and then maybe, you know, take an action on uh, people who are responsible for the stock discrepancies. So that is the advantage of doing the cycle counting on a fixed intervals. So now let us get an overview of the cycle counting process within the D365 FNO. So D365 FNO will enable the cycle counting through uh, different uh, methods. So one is the automatic method and the other one is the manual method. So let's start with the automatic method. So you have something called cycle count plans and you also have cycle count thresholds. So cycle count plans is something where you define your cycle count plan to say that the, the most valued items must be uh, counted like every 30 days and the less valued products must be counted every 60 days. So something like that, you'll be able to define that in the system using the cycle count plans. So once you create a cycle count plan and then well, process this cycle count plan, system will create a cycle count work, okay? So that is one way of uh, creating the cycle count work. And the other method of doing the cycle counting in day 365 is cycle counting thresholds. So cycle counting thresholds on the high level, these are used to uh, create a cycle count work when the stock levels meet a specific threshold. Imagine you got 10 quantity in a specific location for a particular product and when this uh, 10 quantity comes down to 2, so that is the time that you can trigger a cycle counting work so that the warehouse worker can easily uh, complete the counting of that particular product in that location. So that is the cycle counting uh, based on a threshold. So we're going to take a look at it deeper later. And there are other manual methods also where you can generate a cycle count work on ad hoc basis. For example, you want to initiate a cycle count in a specific location on a ad hoc basis, you can generate it. And if you want to, the second option is that if you want to generate a cycle count for a specific item across all the locations, even that can be possible through an ad hoc uh, manual method. So I want to quickly take you through the a Microsoft uh, you know, a process diagram, a simple process diagram that will help you understand this a bit more. So let's take a look at this one here. So these are the two automatic methods that we talked about and these are the manual uh, methods that we talked about. So using the automat automatic methods or the manual methods, what will happen is a cycle counting work will get created. So that is a, a basis for the warehouse worker to go and perform the counting. So using that cycle count work, the warehouse worker will process the cycle counting work in the mobile device. So physically the warehouse worker will go uh, to that particular location and then uh, you know, report what is the real counted quantity. And if there are any discrepancies identified, for example, if the on hand of this particular item is 10 and the counted quantity is 8, so that is a discrepancy that will be reported. So that discrepancy will be reviewed by a cycle counting supervisor generally. And once that is reviewed, only then the system can take care of uh, adjusting the inventory on hand 
to reflect the real quantities in the location. So in this case, uh, we in the system it was 10 and when it is really counted it was 8 and those the reasons will be probed by the cycle counting supervisor and once that is sorted out. So they will just uh, you know confirm that uh, counted uh, they will kind of approve that cycle counting work. So once that is approved then system will create a cycle counting journal. I mean the, the uh, journal that we generally have for the counting. So that journal will get created and will be posted in the system. So that is an overview of the cycle counting. So this is it for this overview session. Now in the next session what we do is we will take a look at the cycle count plans. How do you create them and how, how does that cycle count work or uh, gets created. So all of that process we are going to be seeing it in the next one. Thank you so much. Let us look at some basic configurations required for the cycle counting to work. We have few settings in the warehouse management parameters and then in the location profile you have to enable that cycle counting parameter. Only when that is enabled, the cycle counting work gets generated only for those locations that are eligible for cycle counting. And then you also have certain parameters in the mobile device menu items. Okay. Uh, it is important that you have to be aware of uh, these parameters. So we will take a look at them. And then you also have the, uh, you also have certain configuration in the warehouse worker setup. Okay. So these all uh, basic configurations, we're going to be taking a look at them right now. So let me take you to the system now. Right. So within the warehouse management parameters, I have got this cycle counting in this tab, you have this default cycle counting adjustment type code. So, if you go to this uh, main form by clicking view details, you will be able to create your own, uh, you know, the adjustment type. If you are working with the USMF company, you can just leave this configuration as it is. There is nothing much here, just that uh, you indicate a uh, inventory adjustment type called cycle count, so that you will be able to choose this on a mobile device menu item. So, let us call this a cycle count. And the important thing here is the journal name. You need to tell the system which journal name to be used to post the adjustments. So, when there are some discrepancies identified, for example, the system on hand quantity is 10 and the warehouse workers uh, completes the counting in the mobile device and they enter the data saying that the quantity is 8. So, that there is a discrepancy from system counted stock and the physical counted stock. So that discrepancy will be posted in the system using the counting journal. So you pretty much know the basic counting journal, right? So that counting journal gets posted. So you need to tell the system which counting journal name to be used and that is it. So these uh, other parameters are not applicable for cycle counting, right? So this is about one thing. So you choose that default cycle counting adjustment type code. And then you have to also create a work class ID. So previously we discussed about the work class IDs. So here you have to create a work class ID and then uh, set up what is your default cycle count work class ID. Uh, you know the relation between the work class IDs and the mobile device menu items, right? So based on the work class ID and the mobile device menu items association, system will allow only those of works to be executed by the menu item. Okay, so you define your work class ID here, and the default cycle count work priority. So the works that get created always have the less priority, if you ask me, because uh, the outbound works like picking and then delivering it to the customers generally we give more priority for them. The cycle count works we just give less priority generally. So what is the work priority that you want to give it for your cycle counting works. That is what you will define here. Now looking back, the second one is the location uh, profile. So we go to the location profiles now. In the location profile, you have to enable this allow cycle counting. Only when this is enabled, the cycle counting work gets created only for those locations that are connected to a location profile that is enabled for allow cycle counting. Okay. So sometimes if you see the work is not created, then you might start worrying, hey, why the work is not created? The reality is if the stock is available in location one, 
and that location 1 is connected to a location profile that is disabled with this parameter, then system will not create any cycle counting work because the counting is not done in that location. So, if you need the cycle counting work to be created, then enable this parameter as well. So, this is the second one. Now, going back, the configuration in the mobile device menu items. So, there is certain configuration that I want you to know within the mobile device menu items. Let us take a look at them. So, I have my mobile device menu items form here. So, if you are looking at the standard USMF data, you want to see this uh, cycle count and uh, cycle count blind and spot counting. So, these are the primary ones for uh, counting. Okay, somewhere you have the spot counting as well. Yeah, spot counting. So, these three are used for cycle counting. So, let us go to this cycle count uh, guided. So, the cycle count guided, just like any other uh, menu items, mobile device menu items, it is configured with the system directed. When this is set to system directed, out of the available cycle count works that are uh, created by the system, system will automatically direct the warehouse worker to perform one of the cycle counts that are uh, created. So, this is guided. System will not give the option for the warehouse worker to enter a cycle count work ID there. Okay? This is something that not that is not specific to the cycle count, but I, I thought this is the right time to just remind you about this. When it comes to the other parameters related to the cycle count, you see here, you have this disable cycle count thresholds. Okay, If this is selected, then the cycle count thresholds will be disabled. So, what are those cycle count thresholds? I am going to discuss about it just right after this. And then count total item quantity first. So, when this count total item quantity first is enabled, what would happen is, on the mobile device, uh, uh, on the mobile device, when the warehouse worker is performing the counting, first they have to confirm what is the total item quantity first. For example, if a particular item's quantity is 10 and it is available in two different batches, so, so system does not ask for the individual batch uh, quantities. Firstly, it will ask what is the total stock of the particular item. Okay, only when there are some discrepancies identified, then the warehouse worker need to go to the detail level to enter what is the batch level count and what is the license plate level count. So, if that is what you want uh, the system to do, then you have to enable this parameter. So, you have this button uh, cycle counting on top here. Uh, once you click this cycle counting button, you got these other options as well. Here, you can choose to display the item number and display the license plate and display the batch number, display the serial number. So, based on whatever that you ask the system to display, so though that information will be displayed on the uh, warehouse mobile screen. So, ideally, it is advisable that you choose this display item number, license plate and batch number, all of them. Okay, And uh, you can choose what is your default counting reason code. So, you can set up what is your default counting reason that can be entered here if it is required. And uh, that's it. So, you got this uh, number of attempts. I just want to talk about it a little bit. So, at the mobile device uh, level, what will happen is the warehouse worker uh, starts counting the, starts entering the counted uh, quantity. Okay. So, let us assume that there is 10 quantity in the on hand and the warehouse worker reports that the quantity is 8. That is where the discrepancy is. When the discrepancy is identified, do you want the warehouse worker to attempt it one more time? Ideally, a lot of organizations will uh, you know, force the warehouse workers to do it one more time because it could be a data entry mistake or it could be a counting error. But we are giving another chance to the warehouse worker, hey, there is some discrepancy. Do you want to count it one more time? So, if you want to set it up something like that, then you have to set this number of attempts to 1 or 2. Okay, Not, not more than that usually. That's it. So, this is at uh, this one, close this. And the last one, the warehouse worker setup. Let us go to the warehouse worker form. I search for the worker form. 
So, in the warehouse workers, if you come down here, you got this is a cycle count supervisor. Uh, by enable by enabling this is a cycle count supervisor, you are uh, you know designating somebody as a cycle count supervisor. So, if somebody is a cycle count supervisor, after they count or after they report their counted quantity, system does not require any approval. So, it, system considers that it is a final count and nobody really requires uh, to do any further validation, mainly you know when there is a discrepancy. So, if it is a cycle count supervisor, system automatically uh, you know closes the work if it is a if there is a discrepancy identified. So, you are going to see this in real uh, in one of the sessions. And you also have this uh, maximum percentage limits and all of this. So, I have talked about this in one of the vi videos. So, for now, you just know that these are the parameters you have to look at, right? So, that is it. So, I will see you in the next session. Thank you.